Hello everyone, welcome to this podcast about principles of dermoscopy. This is Natalie Jaimes and I hope you enjoy it. This is the outline that we'll review. We'll go over some principles of dermoscopy, the types of lights, the modalities, and at the end some cases and a brief summary. So let's start with the principles of dermoscopy. And first, re let's recall what happens when we are evaluating the skin with the naked eye. So basically, much of the light that is being transmitted towards the skin is being reflected off the stratum corneum. And therefore, when we are evaluating skin lesions, we can tell if they are symmetric or asymmetric, what's their color, if they have some epidermal changes. And for example, we have this lesion that we can tell is brown, irregular borders, and maybe a more papular component towards the center of the lesion. Let's use dermoscopy. So what happens when we place the dermatoscope over the skin lesion? So very briefly, what we are doing is getting rid of that reflection and instead increasing refraction. So what we were seeing clinically, now we start seeing structures underneath the stratum corneum that we were not able to see with our naked eye. Now, what are the types of lights that are being used by the dermatoscope? We have polarized and non-polarized lights. Non-polarized light is found everywhere. It is emitted by the sun, by lamps, and it is characterized by light waves that are vibrating in more than one plane. So we have light waves vibrating in the horizontal plane, in vertical plane, and this non-polarized light can be transformed into polarized light, which is characterized by light waves that are vibrating in a single plane. Now, what are the modalities of dermoscopy? So dermoscopy can be performed either in the contact or non-contact mode, depending if we are placing the dermatoscope over the skin or not. So if we put everything together, we have three dermoscopy types. So non-polarized dermoscopy that is performed in the contact mode and polarized dermoscopy that can be performed both in the contact and non-contact mode. So let's see this in more detail. And let's start with the non-polarized contact dermoscopy. So non-polarized dermoscopy is always performed in the contact mode, which means that we require the direct contact between the scope and the skin, and we always require a liquid interface or immersion fluid. So by attaching the glass plate of the dermatoscope to the stratum corneum and using the liquid interface that allows matching the refractive index of the skin and the air, we will be able to decrease the light that is being reflected and instead increase refraction. And therefore, we will be able to visualize the structures below the stratum corneum, like in this case, the network. Now, regarding the liquid interface, one of the preferred ones is alcohol, usually alcohol 70%, which has shown to provide clearer images, fewer bubbles, and in addition, it has the benefit that is hygienic. Gel. We use gel for specific skin surfaces like mucosa, nail plate, and sometimes when we are visualizing raised lesions. But we can use water or mineral oil. Here we have a lesion seen with non-polarized dermoscopy, and now you can tell the difference. In the image of the left, we are seeing basically a clinical image with glare, with light that is being reflected, and the reason is that it does not have the liquid interface. In contrast, the image on your right has liquid interface and therefore we are able to observe the dermoscopic structures like a subtle negative network in this case. Now, let's move on to polarized dermoscopy, which can be performed in the contact and non-contact mode. So polarized dermoscopy is usually created in a process called cross polarization. So very briefly, let's see how the dermatoscopes are transforming the non-polarized light into polarized light. So this polarization is created by filters, usually two filters that are perpendicular to each other. And the first thing we need is the source of the non-polarized light.
So once this is turned on, we are having light waves vibrating in different directions. And only those light waves that are vibrating in the same plane or direction as filter 1 will be able to emerge or pass through it. And this will be our polarized light. Now, cross-polarization occurs when this polarized light crosses or not the second filter. This means that if the light wave did not change its direction to the same direction as the same color filter, it will not be able to cross and it will be blocked. And therefore, we will not be able to visualize that reflection from the stratum corneum. However, there are some light waves that will cross the first filter and they will interact with the environment, with the skin. Maybe they will go into deeper layers and will change their direction and will be backscattered from, from here and will be able to cross filter two because it changed its direction and therefore we will be able to visualize the structures from deeper layers. So here we have an example of a blue nebus taken with polarized dermoscopy, both in the contact and non-contact mode. When we are using the contact mode with polarized dermoscopy, we can choose to have liquid interface, but is not always needed. So here we have some of the main differences. Non-polarized dermoscopy always requires the contact mode and always requires a liquid interface. Superficial layers of the skin are better visualized with non-polarized dermoscopy. In contrast, polarized dermoscopy can be performed in the contact or non-contact mode, and we can use a liquid interface or not when using the contact mode. Deeper layers of the epidermis and papillary dermis are better visualized with polarized light. So as we can see here, by using both types of light, we are providing complementary information of the same lesion. And to show this, let's see some examples. Here we have a several kertosis, and you can see that with the non-polarized light, we are better visualizing the milia-like cyst. Here we have a melanoma, and with non-polarized light, we're able to visualize that blue-white veil due to orthokeratosis while the image on the right with polarized light is showing the shiny white structures. And again, the blue news with polarized light, we are seeing more blue hues. In contrast, when we use the non-polarized light, we are visualizing the steel blue color, more homogeneous. Polarized light, as we say, go, goes deeper. Therefore, we can visualize more vascular structures and shiny white structures like in this example and in this other example. So more vascular blush and more shiny white structures. So when visualizing vascular structures, we would prefer to use polarized dermoscopy, non-contact, but if we need to use the contact mode, we will need to remember that the visualization of this vascular structure will be dependent on the amount of pressure that we are applying to the skin. So in summary, polarized and non-polarized dermoscopy are providing complementary information of the same lesion with some structures being more evident with one type of light than the other. And here we have, for example, the steel blue color better visualized with non-polarized light, while shiny white structures better with polarized light. In contrast, blue-white veil due to orthokeratosis and milia-like cysts are better visualized with non-polarized light, while having more blue hues in blue nevi and more vascular structures are very visualized with polarized light. So here we have the main differences. And as we reviewed and can see here in the screen, since polarized light is able to see deeper structures um, like vessels and shiny white structure, this will be the preferred mode to perform skin cancer screen. And with this, I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy it.